Welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. Looks like Will and Ezra are making some mushrooms too at the moment. Add a few of these really big caps with the slimy gills. Ah, I shouldn't say slimy. Moist. The lady in the video called for Portobello. But I prefer never to know a mushroom by name. So is this a breakfast stew? It will be, but not today. This stew is for tomorrow. It has to simmer all day. Some things are just better done slowly. We've added the anonymous mushrooms. So next, we... Um... Hmm. I've got the recipe video on pause next door. I used to follow a recipe I learned from Ida herself. The best cook you're going to meet on this river. Of course, it had a few secret ingredients. She has the good sense to preserve some mystery around her cooking. Better for business. Ida is so shrewd she swore me not only to secrecy, but to ignorance. I had to promise to forget the recipe just as soon as I'd cooked it. Let me tell you, it's not so easy to forget something on purpose as you may think, my friend. Not so easy. Oh, am I playing as Ezra now? I can make recordings? Tinkling pots and pans. Simmering stew. Let's go check out that recipe. Although I think Shannon has unpaused it. Crushed tomatoes, salsa, or even a little ketchup. Here's the thing, nobody has to know. Throw in some more of that spice blend we threw together earlier. Stir all that up and crack a beer, baby. You'll be here for a while. What did she, she just say to do? Will's trying to make this too right now. Uh, before this, she was talking about the type of mushroom to use. But don't tell me. Will says it's better not to know their names. Hmm. Maybe I can help him figure it out. I got kind of sucked into this program. And even that wasn't enough to convince her. So I trained rigorously in the art of forgetting, studying for months under a master amnesiac. Finally, I learned to forget so quickly and accurately that I was able to convince Ida to share with me the most obscure secrets of her kitchen. <laughs> a master amnesiac, what? As a demonstration of my trustworthiness, I forgot the names of my own parents right there in front of her. <laughs> I hope that's not true. Every time I wanted to cook this legendary stew, I'd call Ida up on the telephone and ask her for a quick, temporary reminder. Here on the boat, we haven't got a phone line, so I have to seek out culinary wisdom on videotapes of cooking shows. So, back to the matter at hand. Next tweet. Hey, Kate. Did you already make the spice blend? Oh, it's you. I thought... Never mind. Hello. Well, I don't know that it qualifies as a spice blend, but I spilled the salt in some of Kate's herbal tea here. <laughs> I don't think you want to add tea to soup. Kate to Shannon. Hey there, could I ask you... To Will. Wait. Why are you cooking? We're stopping at Sam and Ida's in 20 minutes. It's for tomorrow. Oh. 
Well, just don't forget about it this time. I'm not scrubbing up any more boiled over sludge. <laughs> to Shannon. Sorry, listen, I have a favor to ask. There's a package for the telephone exchange and I can't get the mammoth back there. Could you deliver it for us? Thanks a lot. I've got the dinghy all ready to go. Maybe take your friend with you. One of you can man the outboard motor and the other can aim the flashlight. It's dark. Thanks again for your help. This is about as far as a tugboat can go. You know, noise and lights disturb the bats. So you'll pass through the bat sanctuary, which is really nice, by the way. Be sure to check out all the plaques and stuff for, um, cool bat facts. Plenty of time. Anyway, the Echo River Central Exchange, or excuse me, Consolidated Auxiliary Switch Number 30. They changed the name when the power company took over. Anyway, it's just on the other side of the bat sanctuary. This pack package is going to Poppy. She's an operator. The operator. We'll meet you on the other side at Sam and Ida's for a scheduled early breakfast stop. Just follow the river. Can't miss it. Oh, I almost forgot. You may or may not be interested. There's this kind of weird memorial sculpture on your way in, just before the bat sanctuary. I always recommend people at least stop and take a look at it. It's really... sort of... I don't know how to say it. You should check it out. Okay, bye. Oh, this is so cool looking. So do we go where I point the flashlight or do we just go forwards and... That's so cool. I love looking at the light playing off everything. We seem to be going awfully slow, though. Oh, here we go. What are those things? Floating. First, like, I want to say they're like ducks or something, but I don't think they're alive. I don't know what they are. We claim these helmets in the names of the folks who wore them, and we place them here in their memory, but also as a spit in the greedy green eye of that power company who bought up our old mine and traded our brothers and sisters' safety for a little more yield, but only yielded 28 good men and women dead when the walls collapsed and the tunnels filled with water. Christ. That's what they are, their helmets. Twenty-eight died. Their lungs were black, but now they're washed clean and full of water, too, and swept through hidden tunnels into some awful cave we never will find. And so we guess the water buried them for us, so let this here be the marker for their grave. And if any son of a bitch from the power company wants to take back these helmets as company property, just you try it and see what will happen. Hey. Elkhorn? That's the mine we met in. Where your folks, uh, worked. Looks like it's been here for a while. I sure as hell wouldn't mess with it. You think whoever wrote it is still that angry? I don't think you ever forget anger like that. Nah, I guess you probably don't. This probably stirs up... I mean, how do you... Brings back some anger for me, too. Yeah, that's understandable. I guess that's what a memorial should do, huh? Help you hang on to your feelings. Otherwise, they fade away. That's just what time does. Ah, 
Hi there. They look like they would emit light, don't they? But they don't. Howdy. <laughs> what? You look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Are you feeling okay? Oh, uh, sure. That doesn't hurt anymore, my leg. It's just kind of numb. Like it's not there. My shoulder, too, actually. That's an old one, though, from an accident. I'm lucky I just had some nerve damage there. It probably should have been a lot worse. You know, those guys from the distillery are just making the best of a bad situation, just like the rest of us. Hey, one of them said to me earlier they could even help me take care of these medical bills for my leg, you know? Get it all together on a plan. Consolidated. <laughs> Consolidated. Consolidated Power Company. That sounds like a really bad idea. Oh, I don't know. They seem to have a lot of experience with this kind of stuff. They've got a whole process figured out. Anyway, I have a feeling it'll all work out. Even this delivery? Yeah. We're almost there, right? Hell, at this point, I bet we could just take off the parking brake and that truck would roll into five Dogwood Drive by itself. Listen. That old truck I've been driving belonged to my boss, Ira, Lysette's husband. To be honest, Ira didn't like me very much. But somehow Lies got it into her mind that he would have wanted me to have that truck someday. Maybe to make up for all the yelling he did. Or maybe so his ghost could hold it over me. Just one more thing to feel like I owed him for. Anyway, they got their own trucks at the distillery. And now that the antique shop is closing up, I've got no use for that old truck. I was thinking you could take it. Uh... Sure, I could keep an eye on it for you. Until you get straightened out. Sure, okay. Sounds good. Visitors to the Echo River, Kentuckiana River, Bat Artificial Herbanaculum and Sanctuary are asked to take extra precautions in order to prevent the introduction of foreign fungal contaminants and the spread of White Nose Syndrome. Please do not visit the sanctuary during the same day in which you visited any cave known or suspected to host bats infected with White Nose Syndrome. Please do not leave your vehicle. If you must leave your vehicle, please remove shoes, clothes, jewelry, headwear, and eyeglasses to ensure you do not bring any foreign spores ashore with you. Please do not touch any bats or structures. The Kentuckiana River Bat is confused by light. If you are using a lantern or other artificial light source, be aware that it may attract and confuse bats. If you are approached by bats, do not panic. Relax. Stop your vehicle and switch off your light. Never touch a bat. Okay, so if we have any problems, turn off the light. Gotcha. Bat fact. Ever talk with your mouth full? Bats do it all the time. Bats talk in extremely high frequency clicks, too high for humans to hear. Then they use their powerful ears to scan for the echoes of these ultrasonic clicks. 
by comparing very subtle differences in the time these echoes take to come back. Differences of just millionths of a second. Bats are able to picture their environment with enough accuracy to catch a flying insect. Once a bat has caught an insect in its mouth, it's still flying and so it still needs to avoid running into anything. So bats keep clicking away, even while they munch on a tasty bug snack. It may be poor table manners, but it's crucial for surviving in the dark. I wonder how the other bats know whether one of them is really talking or just chasing a bug. I think when they're actually communicating, it sounds more like singing. Hmm. I'd like to hear that. Bat fact, the Kentuckiana River bat's natural diet mostly consists of moths and other small insects that breed along the river. Here at the Artificial Herbinaculum and Sanctuary, we use a combination of chemical snares and ultrasonic wards to repel all potentially contaminant bearing insects, and replace them with our own locally bred and spawned hypoallergenic antiseptic pseudo moths, which we call the little gray nothing moth. You may be thinking that the other moths and insects that Kentucky on a river bat would have been eating are very much relieved that their natural predator has found another food source. Not so. We've installed netting and highly effective moth traps along the river, where the Kentucky on a river bat normally hunts, to balance their escape from the, ch from the food chain. Ah. To make sure that they don't hurt the food chain, imbalance it. But eating moths isn't the only systematic contribution these bats make. Or systemic, rather. They also produce a potent fertilizer in the form of guano that helps plant life thrive along the Echo River. Along the Echo River, I, I think there's supposed to be an and here, and the shore of Lake Leth. In order to minimize the sanctuary's impact on subterranean agriculture, we collect that precious guano here at the Herbinaculum and manually distribute throughout the caves. It's a full-time job. Sounds like a lot of work. They eat fake moths? Yeah, uh, reading. Hypoallergenic antiseptic pseudo moths, the little gray nothing moth. Well, a lot of people eat fake food, right? Food taken apart and put back together so it looks and tastes like something they remember eating before, even if they never really did. It is reassuring to know someone's taking care of everything for these little bats. Yeah. Who's gonna build the people herbinaculum? Maybe we'll build it ourselves. Maybe we already did. Like the folks in the mine. You said they used to buy stuff. Fans, canaries, all those little trinkets. To make it bearable. There's still a lot of stuff down there. It feels cluttered but human. I just mean, all people need is enough to pretend we're home, and we can make it anywhere. You get kind of philosophical when you're drinking. Did anyone ever tell you that? Yeah, I guess I do. Nah, this is nothing. I used to have this drinking buddy who would get loaded and tell the weirdest damn riddles, like, which is more musical? A truck passing by a factory, or a truck passing by a music school. <laughs> Count your blessings. These look so strange. I'm not quite sure what I'm seeing. Umbrella. <laughs> Why is there an umbrella down here? there. Are they collecting the guano? 
Or just like, stalking us or something. Or I guess, if they're stalking anybody, they, anybody they'd specifically be stalking Conway. <laughs> it's a radio in the water. It's working. Sign. White nose syndrome is still largely a mystery. We suspect that the white fungal growth which appears on bats' faces and wings irritates and confuses them, causing them to awaken early from hibernation and venture outside, depleting stored energy they need to survive through winter. But biologists are nowhere near curing the disease. It spreads quickly, and it is highly fatal. In this way, white nose syndrome has drawn some comparisons to colony collapse disorder as suffered by bees. White nose syndrome and colony collapse disorder are sudden, violent, and mysterious. Will honeybees in the Kentuckiana River bat be two more lost species? Wiped out in a geological blink and forgotten to natural history? It's possible that a cure won't be identified in time, so the sanctity of this artificial hibernaculum is our best hope of preserving them. As you leave the Echo River Kentuckiana River bat hibernaculum and sanctuary, please make sure your vehicle and clothing are free of hitchhikers. I just realized, I think Blue is aboard the boat with us, aren't they? Yeah, that's Blue right there. I didn't even notice them before. Looks like we've arrived. Central Exchange. Wait a minute, that person looks familiar. Is that that person Ezra talked to in the parking lot back at the museum? Flora. Oh, hi. I remember you. What are you doing down here? I'm just exploring. I like dark underground places. I'm a romantic. Really? What does that mean to you? It means I like poems and rivers and mysteries. Okay, bye. That is so odd. There's really no light here at all. I mean, it looks like there's sort of lights here. I mean, look, look, that person even has a light on their desk. Huh. Strange. I mean, these people can't work in the dark, obviously. And they're not. They have some lights. Look at the way the light plays off this wall. It's a little bit hard to see. I can't move the flashlight like I did before when I was on the boat. It's really cool. To shield. Softly. Could be bypassed with another capacitor at 100 nanofarads to reduce noise. If your circuit's too noisy, you should tie those floating pins to ground. Huh. That's a pretty good idea. They're probably picking up all kinds of radio interference. Dashiel Morse, pleased to meet you. We don't install this type of phone for customers anymore, but there are quite a few of them still in circulation. 
Anyway, the new system doesn't source enough current to ring these old bells, so I'm trying to come up with a workaround. Maybe a little box the customers could attach right before the wall jack? I'm a bit of a circuit geek myself. I bet. I mean, uh, you seem very comfortable with electronics. Is this your first time down here? Yeah, I can tell. Your eyes can't quite adjust to the light. It takes some practice. Believe it or not, I've been coming here since I was a kid, for one reason or the next. Back then, this place was a train station. It's true. They had bats then, too. But they were considered a nuisance. A train station? What happened to it? Well, the river shifted and this place slowly filled with water, carrying the trains away with the current. It does that, the river. And I don't begrudge it. It's a good reminder that everything we have is borrowed. Even trains. Eventually, someone at the Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces heard this place was still empty, so they moved the phone company in here. I returned here as a, lung, a young lineman, a skill I picked up in wartime, running telephone wires behind enemy lines. We used trees instead of poles. I missed that, actually. They were easier to climb. It's just as well. I'm in no shape to be climbing anything these days. Closest I get is patching up the wiring in the crystal room for the... WEVP folks. WEVP, that's community television. I've volunteered there for a number of years. I know everybody there. Ralph, Sherry, Weaver, Dave. You knew Weaver, huh? Sure, Weaver Marquez. That's funny, I was just thinking about her. Yeah, I met her a couple times at the TV station. Suppose I didn't know her too well. She handled the archives and I was helping with wiring and stuff. She really seemed to know her way around all that gear, though. She had a head for signals, I think. No idea where she ended up. I guess she's probably not too popular around the station anymore, but I always liked her. Listen, miss. If you're interested in WEVP, you should go talk to them directly. They're always looking for volunteers. Take the ferry over to the silo. There's a mail stop there. They don't have a sign or anything, just ask around. I guess I'll get back to this damn old ringer. Poppy's just a little further down if you're dropping off that package. Nice chatting with you. Abel and Eloise, the lovers' couriers. Bred for racing, Abel and Eloise spent most of their lives as carrier pigeons in the employ of the Echo River Avian Post. They retired here after Abel's was disfigured in an accident with a light aircraft. But old habits were hard to die. Abel and Eloise would pick up scraps of paper from the ground, the trash, even pull them out of pockets, and deliver them to other people nearby, to delight or embarrassment. <laughs> That's cute. Word spread, and travelers passing through this tunnel began to come prepared with love letters, poems, and other written desires to pass along indirectly through these pigeons. After a hard day's work, Abel and Eloise would always be found nestled closely together in a disused newspaper stand set aside for their habitation. And that's where we left them. There's Poppy. <laughs> 